Today we're celebrating what the Lord has done in 24 years here at Life Church in Round Rock. And I want to start with the scripture because I think it's important that uh, we build our lives upon the very word of God today. And the word tells us in Matthew 16 and 18, I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I love that because we have faced some Hades in our day. Can I get another good amen? We have faced some difficult times. There have been COVID moments. There's been snowmageddons. There's been people where the house is so full we uh, couldn't get in. Then the house was empty because they, wouldn't, they didn't want us to have church because of COVID. And I have preached to empty seats. I don't like that. I don't like preaching to empty seats. And I remember the first service that we uh, opened the doors to come back. The government said, yeah, it's good. Let's, you, can, you can come, but be six feet apart. And we really didn't know all that COVID had come with it. And, and I remember 10 people showed up. And I was so excited because I was preaching to empty seats. And eventually, more and more people started coming back. And then uh, I, I am thankful that, uh, that God brings us through all of this. And he says, I will build my church. I will build my church. Uh, I want to stop right there because when, when we first started, uh, God put it on my heart uh, to get an offering and raise $25,000 in 30 days for missions. And there was a church in East Africa that I had met the missionary at a conference. And the Lord woke me up in the middle of that conference and said this. If you will build my church in East Africa, then I will build the church in Round Rock. Okay. Now, when you're going from a word from the Lord, you better know you've heard from him. Can I get another good amen? Amen. And so I came back to Round Rock after that conference, and I, I told the church, well, I'd met this missionary, Pastor Munga was his name, and uh, just declared what the Lord had told me. And do you know, in 30 days, Live Church raised $25,000. And we ended up, yeah, you can thank God for that. And so... We gave it to um, a, a district leader at that time that I trust. And I said, can you make sure that this gets to Pastor Munga in East Africa? And he said, absolutely. Well, when he gave it to him, the pastor was overwhelmed and began to have tears in his eyes. Come to find out, we didn't know this, that where he was building his church, if you, he ran out of money. He got it started, but he just didn't have the funds to finish it. And what we didn't know is that the government... That government there could take over your property if you didn't finish it in, in a short period of time. And he was at the end of that time frame. And do you know God used this church to build a church in East Africa? I'm telling you, your giving has gone across the world. And we thank God for that. And then I'm reminded of what he spoke to me. You build my church in East Africa, and I will build the church in Round Rock. And that's exactly what God has done. So I want to start with some history of the past 24 years. Why would we do this? Well, because the Bible says to do this. Deuteronomy 4 and 9 says this, only be careful and watch yourselves closely so that you what? What are the next three words? Let's say it together. Do not forget, be careful that you do not forget the things your eyes have seen or let them fade from your heart for a few days. Now, what does it say? As long as you live. And he, and he does this stuff there. Teach them to your children and to their children after them. So it's important to tell the stories over and over. Why? Because the scripture tells us not to forget. So we want to keep the same kind of excitement in our future as what 
we did when we first started. So I want to I want to go back 24 years ago, and I want to share with you just a little bit. The last Sunday in November, November the 27th, 1988, was our first service, and we started with 20 people, and that included the kids, and that included the dog that was at the house, and the goat. We counted anything that was living and breathing, we counted them. We had 20. We were glad for the 20. And we met for the first time. We were meeting in a hotel there on 35 in Round Rock. That one got too small, so we went to another one, and we did the church in a box. Somebody's ever heard of church in a box? You take your PA system, your keyboards, everything that you need, microphones, you put it in a travel trailer or in some kind of a box, and you go every Sunday. You take it all in, and you have to bring it all back out. And I was thankful that we only had to do that for four months. And then I saw a building. Let's look at this building right here. Some of you may remember this building. It's, it's in Baghdad. Street. Just trying to play a little bit there. Yeah, we, we would say the church in Baghdad. They go, overseas? No, here in Round Rock. And it, it had been empty and it was for sale. We were four months old as a church. And I, I want to build your faith today because this is what God has done. Do not forget. And so God gave me a, a chapter of, of scripture and it was Psalm 48. And, and I, it talks about the, the towers, and I, I could see that this building had a chimney. I claim that as a tower in Jesus' name. It talks about the doors. It had a door. I claimed the round door in Jesus' name, the round top door. And everything about it, and, and, and even it, it talked about uh, walking, uh, walking in, in, uh, in Zion. And, and I remember when, when I first was praying about what do I name this, this church. It was like supernaturally something happened. And I, I wasn't even planning on this name. But we first started as Zion Christian Center. Zion Christian Center. And it was like supernaturally my hand just started writing. And I remember the desk I was sitting at. I remember the moment it happened. And we called ourselves Zion. Uh, we, we were there and I saw this building and I thought, God, I claim this in Jesus' name. So we called the owner that had it for sale, and I asked him if he would own or finance. Now, here we are, a church, four months old. Come on, somebody. This is faith talking right here. And he said, yes, absolutely, I'll own or finance. He said, uh, but I want $75,000 down. Well, we didn't have $75,000. And... I thought, okay, God, you got us through the door one. You can get us through door number two and number three. How are we going to do this? Well, we had heard about other churches that uh, had begun to raise money by semi-truckload of merchandise from Kmart and Target. But it cost $10,000. I didn't have $10,000. But I borrowed some from my parents, and I told them what was going on. I said, I, I need to borrow some money. And they agreed, we bought a semi truckload of Kmart discontinued and returned merchandise. Some items were broken. So like glassware, we were putting pieces together of glassware to make uh, full sets of dishes and cups. And I mean, anything that Kmart sold, uh, it was there. Truck beds, you know, liners, whatever was, was at Kmart, we got. Uh, personal items, uh, baby clothes, clothing, hygiene, just whatever. And so that took three days to set all that up. And three, we took three days to sell it. And do you know, the fun part was it was in the summer. And somebody had to sleep outside and watch the stuff in the parking lot on the side of this building. Guess who? And so me and then some other men at the church, we, we slept outside under the stars. It was, it was awesome. And we had a great time get, getting to know one another, and it was fun. And do you know, at the end of the cell, 
of what, what was happening there, God did a miracle. And not only did we get the $10,000 back, we were able to come up when that year of $35,000 that we needed, the $35,000 the first year. And so we did another truckload and we were able within the next year for the, for the next 35000 plus making payments and utility bills. And I remember I was working a full-time job at that time, and it, it, it was difficult. It was very difficult. I, I remember uh, I had spent the night there in a cot, and it was hot. And I remember going on the, side of the, the other side of the property where the hose was, and that's where I took a shower outside with my clothes on. And do you know, sometimes what God calls you to do, you realize it was called correctly the work of God. And that's exactly what we did. We had faith, but we also had the works that we needed. And God did a miracle. We were there, and I think we have some pictures. Yeah, there we go. Those are some of the pictures of people that we, in fact, those tents were actually from the cell. So we just put them up and said, well, in case it rains. And the funny thing, and I'll just share this with you. When we did the target run, it was in October. It was the first three days was hot. I mean, you know how October's here in central Texas can be? Well, a cold front came in. And what we had was merchandise from Target from the summer. And there were bathing suits, women's bikinis, bathing suits, ten, I mean, flip-flops. And it was cold rain, cold rain. But you know, God was good anyway. And, and we were able to raise the money. And so I thank God that God got us into our first building. I remember the price was $275,000 24 years ago. And that, uh, to a lot of you, that doesn't sound like a lot of money today, you know, in buying property. But to me, it was millions. Because when you don't have it, you depend on God. Talk about singing that song, I depend on you. Well, absolutely, that's what we did. And God did the miracle. And during this time, God also gave us a couple. It's Dan and Johnny Anderson. That's them. And I want to talk about Johnny for a minute. Johnny has gone on to be with the Lord, but she wrote Bible studies and did classes, and she, she was just right there beside me helping and teaching and instructing individuals, and she was amazing, and she wrote all the study material. She was such a vital part of our church, and Dan Anderson, he actually was part of doing the videos, and he did videos for us, and I want to show you something funny. This is what he used. I found this the other day. It's pretty heavy, folks, and if you look now, the cameras that we're using, even in our church, are only about this big, but this has, and this still has the VHS inside of it. I don't know if you can see that or not. It'd be interesting to see what, what's in here, but we had videos upon videos, and he would video every time that we'd come together and worship. And I thank God for Dan Anderson. He was, and Johnny Anderson. They were such a blessing to our church. And I just wanted to show you their faces and so that you could see who helped us get started. Well, we were there for two years and then this property came available. There you can see. That used to be a karate place. Now, I know it looks like a church and it, it did actually come from Hutto. They moved it to Round Rock. And it, it was one of the original churches that, uh, black churches that was in uh, the area. Well, they sold it, got different property, and the karate people bought it. Well, it came for sale. So we sold the Baghdad property and doubled that money that we had invested in it and were able to buy this property. And we were known as the karate church. Really, we were known as the karate church. Oh, you're the karate church because the sign... They didn't take their sign down even after we moved in for a while, but that was one of the stipulations that we leave the sign because they wanted their sign back. And finally, they, I think it was a month later, they took it down. But we were known as that. There was one problem with this building. One side was a parking lot, but the other side was a train track. 
and the windows were old. They were single pane. Uh, it, it was pier and beam. And so when the trains came by, there was a mighty move of God and the whistle. And it seemed like every time the train would come by, it would be during the altar time, the altar service. It, it, it has never failed. Would you want to come to Jesus? And then, well, one day the trump is going to sound. You better be ready. No, I didn't do that. But it felt like it. And it, 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 was, it was just amazing how that always worked out. E- even at the hotel, the maid service there, the cleaning people, they seemed to always time it when we were doing our altar service. They would be right outside the door. There was something about our altar services. Always got some kind of hindrance that, gives, that makes you start thinking, right? The devil doesn't like any time that people come to Christ. But we were winning souls. I remember people in our neighborhood coming to Christ, and uh, it, it was exciting times. And during these times, we had exciting children's ministry. I think we have a picture of some of the kids. If you know some of the kids, this is when they were younger. There's my daughter there at the top in the middle. Uh, she now has a baby. This, this was a long time ago. And let's go to the next picture. There was, I remember there were 80 kids that came to VBS. And it, we had, they, they took over the building with VBS. And, and I, I remember uh, our leaders, Julie Zachary, some of you know who that is, Sharon McWright, and then now Deborah Farrell, in, that's helping in uh, our children's ministry, uh, as well as Bernadette. I think I saw her walking. Yes, there's Bernadette right back there in our children's ministry. We haven't done uh, any kind of VBS because of the COVID. Uh, my, my goal is somehow I would love to do some kind of children's get together in the summer again. Uh, now that we know more about how safe it can be. Also our youth. And I, I realize we don't have a youth pastor right now. We're, we're believing that God has got the right person for us. But I, I know that our youth, there they are. That's, that's some of our youth. They, they went in the summertime to camps. In fact, we, they would raise money so that they could get and hire, uh, rent these buses, and they have a driver, and drive them uh, to camp. And then we had somebody even donate a van to our church, one of those what, 15 or 17 passenger van. And we, I'm telling you, my children's lives were changed because they went to that camp in more ways than one. Spiritually, their lives, it, it, and I don't know if you've ever been to a youth camp, but it can be life-changing. But also, one of the other changes was, that's where my daughter met her husband-to-be. Just saying. A lot of good things happened at camp. I think, do we have another picture of them? There they are. That was one of their funny Christmas ones. So anyway. Uh, We also took advantage of all the seasons. Let's go to the next picture. We've done trunk or treat and just take the back end of our car and, and have these fall festivals and uh, we, we love, let's go to the next picture. I thought this was cute. He's now rather like almost a teenager, but we took advantage of these, these holidays and we, we love celebrating even super Sunday. I think we have a picture of super Sunday. There it is. And we, we give out drinks, like some kind of soda. We would give, uh, chips, snacks, something to help celebrate because Really, every Sunday is Super Sunday, but there was more emphasis on that that certain Sunday, typically in January. We also love serving our community. I think we have a picture of Love the Rock. There we are. And we, we would go out into the community, help people fix up their homes, rake their leaves, do their yards, uh, move trash around, go to the parks. Uh, we love to serve our community. We did that multiple times. Uh, we... We also helped Agape uh, and bless them back to school. We would, we would give uh, school supplies over the years. I started something called Souls for Souls, and we bought tennis shoes for kids who could not afford new shoes going back to school. Also, Soldier's Shoe Box, I think the next picture, and we gave, someone gave $1,000 just to help the soldiers, and we, we were able beyond this 
picture that you see, to bless the soldiers with products that, that cost them uh, money there in Killeen, and we bless the soldiers there. This year, you did the Operation Christmas Child, and those boxes are going all across the world. I thank God for you. Being that I, I was at a church where I did music uh, for about 13 years, uh, and all my life I, was, I have been involved in music. Music was an important factor because I love to praise and to worship God. I love to. It's just part of my DNA, my spiritual DNA, and I love it. And here at Life Church, we've had major importance on praise and worship. And I, I want to say that I appreciate Justin Farrell right over here, sitting on the side, helping us with our music. Don't you appreciate the efforts of our band, singers, media, and sound? Yeah, we, we thank God for them. They're they're in, the only time the sound people get any kind of notice is if something goes wrong. Hey! But I want to notice them today and say, great job. We appreciate you. Come on, one more time. <laughs> Media, thank you so much. I think Dean's back there today. Different people are, are helping out. But we, we would, let's go to the next slide. We love to do a song every season. And it's from the Trans-Siberian Orchestra, and it's called Carol of the Bells. And that's one of the pictures. And Lord willing, we'll try to do that again this year. Uh, it, it is so wonderful when this team gets together and we get to sit in heavenly places. God is so good. I, I, I want to share just a few more with you. But a, there were a couple times that we help pizza delivery people. And I think we have a picture. There they are. And we, in the middle, end of, basically end of the service, we would have the pizzas come being delivered. And somebody would meet them at the side door, front door, and say, hey, they're waiting for you in the auditorium to bring the pizzas. It's okay. You can disturb. Well, they come in. And what we did, we told the congregation beforehand, we're going to invite a pizza delivery person. And we called ahead and said, is there somebody that needs some help? And we, we found some worthy people that really needed extra help. The first one that came, we gave them over, I think it was $1,500 tip for three pizzas. That's pretty, that's pretty amazing on a Sunday. And then the next year we did it again, and it was over a thousand as well. Don't remember the exact numbers, but I think it's so amazing that these people's lives were affected because of the gifts that you gave. And I want to say how much I appreciate this church. I love being part of the prison ministry. I've got a, the next picture here. This is Kaylee, my daughter. Uh, she's such a gifted singer, and uh, she was so mad because you had to be 18 before you could come into the prison system to sing in, in the services. And she was so mad because, like, oh, man, I'm 16. Oh, man, I'm 17. Finally, when she turned 18, she got to come. And I'm telling you, we joined with Mike Barber Ministries. We've been with them for over 30 years. And, uh, and, and of course, during COVID, we, we haven't been allowed to go. They're just now allowing uh, us to go back in. But I'm going to tell you some of the, the most heavenly times, heavenly services were under a tent in a prison. And you know why, why it's so effective is because when people are at rock bottom and they're desperate for God, you can have some church. Come on, somebody. Amen. You can have when people are desperate for God. And finally, Kaylee was able to go in, and boy, did she have an impact on the inmates. She sang a song called Clean. I don't know if you've ever heard the song, but the line of the chorus, and this is so moving, there's nothing too dirty that he can't make worthy. Isn't that beautiful? And no matter what you've done, no matter how you got here, God loves you, and he wants to forgive you. We loved also sponsoring uh, Adult and Teen Challenge. I think we got a picture of them there. There they are. Uh, we love for them to come. They're at, this group is from San Antonio. We love for them to come and share their testimony of what God is doing in their lives and how we, we love to sponsor them. Some of you have sponsored them this, this year. And I love hearing how they have been set free from their addiction that they were facing. Most of you know that I have some peeps at Lowe's. 
I like to say I have friends in Lowe's places. Ba-dum-tsh. I may or may not go there a lot, but this lady right here, I ministered to her for two years. And finally, we started getting on the subject of baptism. And do you know, when she got off work one day, she said, I want you to baptize me. And I said, well, absolutely. And it was my honor to baptize her in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a beautiful day. Amen. So I have a ministry at Lowe's. Like some of you have a beach ministry. I have a ministry at Lowe's. Just kidding. One of the most precious times I have is when I'm with people in one-on-one and they're close to the end of their lives. And I think we have a picture. That man right there is called Jug. That's his name, Jug. And he was on his last few days and he had some questions about dying. And he, he, he just was a little concerned, a little nervous. And after we talked, and I, and I told him how wonderful heaven was going to be and his new life and he wouldn't hurt anymore. And he wouldn't be sick any longer. And we, we began to minister to him. And it was, it was just amazing, the transformation that happened. And I'm going to tell you, when, when you're talking about eternity and, and you begin to invite the presence of God, there's such peace that begins to, to evolve in the room. And uh, he, he settled down. He said, okay, I think I'm ready for this. And he was. And he died just a few days later. We celebrated his life. But I want to show you another picture. This is LaVon. Some of you may know who LaVon is. You may remember her. Uh, They came from a church, a very quiet church that they came out of. And they came to our church and loved it. Here they were. They're they're in their 80s, uh, 90s. And her and her husband, I, I remember them. They would try to clap and they were always off. They just, but it was okay. At least they were clapping their hands. And I remember him, the husband, he would raise his hands and just have tears down his face. Well, LaVon was at the end of her life. And I I went to where um, her daughter uh, asked me if I would come and uh, minister to her. And she couldn't open her eyes. And she couldn't speak at this point. She, She was very close to death. And I said, LaVon, I think you can hear me, and I know you can't respond, but I want to sing a song over you before I leave today. And I prayed with her, and I I sang this song, and I, I held her hand, and I started singing, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. I, I went to the last verse. When we've been there 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun, she very gently squeezed my hand. I'll never forget it. She was letting me know, I do hear you. I can't respond. But that just let me know it's okay. And she died a few days later after that. I love those moments with people because it's all about it's all about people getting right with God and her and her husband did exactly that they got right with God where they needed to be coming out of a very quiet and reserved church where you just repeat words to coming and lifting their hands and we begin to teach them hey the Bible talks about lifting up of your hands Oh, that men would lift holy hands, a New Testament. And so with that, I, I love seeing people's lives change. But then to end up on a, on a high note, we have had from the Easter Bunny to this guy. There he is. You know who that is, don't you? Elvis. And it seems like we would use whatever means possible to minister to people through kids, ministries, through whatever means possible. And then God allowed us to move from the location on 35. And and I want to go back to that for a second because I prayed and I said, God, 
give us property on 35. Just, just let us get there. Well, we wanted to build there, but the, the city said we needed more land. The, the bus people behind us wanted $2 million for their property. And it was, it was like, by the time we got done built, it was going to be over $6 million. And that's just not using wisdom for a church our size. And this building came available. And all that was here when we first started, we, we ended up moving here. Uh, and, I, I, and I think it's so amazing that there was, we ended up getting the whole five acres. We even owned the road. The church owns the road, not, not the county, not the city. The church owns it. I mean, God did a miracle that we would get this property, number one. And there was a church. Uh, it was a four-square church. Uh, the, the pastor uh, had left, and the church was, uh, they just weren't able to keep their building. This church building uh, stopped. Uh, where's the pole? There it is, right there. I think it was right there. The church stopped right here. So that was the auditorium. The platform was right there. And we had these circle chairs this way for some of you that was with us at that time. But we ended up making it bigger. Uh, Justin, your dad helped build this platform. Uh, we, we were able to uh, buy the lights. We were able to extend this here uh, about eight years ago. And then we added on to the front with our children's ministry because in the house behind here, the kids used to have to walk outside to go to their Sunday school classrooms. So we, we were like, okay, God, do a miracle for us. God did it. We were able to build on the front to where we are today. And for starting with this keyboard and this Bible, we were able to be at the place we are today. And only God could do that. I'm not smart enough to make it happen, but he is. I'm not rich enough to make it happen, but he is. I don't have that all worked out and planned out, but he does. And I'm excited to see what's going to happen in the next 24 years. Can I get a good amen? So the Bible tells us to never forget. Very quickly, I want to tell you, we are a church who serves a great God. That's number one. We're a church. Can I get a good amen? Our history is his story, his story, his story of how it all happened. And we're a church that started out in prayer and through prayer, God did this. And I want to remind you how important prayer is in your life. And we did all of this for him, but I don't want to do it without him. I don't want to have a church service without God. If God's not there, I don't want to be there. And I love a church that's hungry for God's presence. Deuteronomy 6 and 10 says, When God, your God, ushers you into the land he promised, and that's the success, through your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you're going to walk into large, bustling cities you didn't build, well-furnished houses you didn't buy, come upon wells you didn't dig, vineyards and olive orchards you didn't plant. In other words, you didn't do this. When you take it all in and settle down, pleased and content, and he says it again, make sure you don't what? Don't forget how you got there. So what are we going to do for the next 24 years? Let's continually seek God's presence even over our own efforts. Can I get a good amen? The next thing I want to tell you real quickly, we take next steps and help others to do the same. We take next steps. And you say, well, what does that mean? Well, I believe that God wants to do great things inside of all of us. That's you, that's me, and he has great things in store for us. And if you're alive, if you're breathing and sucking air, he's not finished with you yet. Can I get a good amen? He's not done. Your purpose isn't over. Some people say, well, I'm saved and I've got my fire insurance. No, that's not the way to look at it. That when you get your fire insurance, that just means you've got a work to do. And you will begin to change and you'll, you'll begin to find out there's such joy in serving and giving to others. I love to see life change. First Peter 1 and 7. You call out to God for help and he helps. He's a what? Good father that way. But don't forget there it is again. Don't forget. 
He's also a responsible father and won't let you get by with sloppy living. Your life is a journey. You must travel with deep consciousness of God. So we will continue in the next 24 years to have next step classes. We will continue to have Bible study for women and for men. We will continue to have first Wednesday prayer. We will continue to have men's breakfast and continue to have marriage classes. The things that we were excited about, we will continue to do because God is not finished with us yet. Can you give me a great big amen? Hallelujah. You see, success is when people are moving from where they are to where God wants them to be. To where God, that is true success. In the church world, most will celebrate attendance or they'll celebrate the the offerings they get every Sunday. Some people call that nickels and noses, just saying. But that's not all that there is. Success, true success, is when people are drawn closer to God. You can know God. You can know him. You actually can find freedom. You can discover your purpose. And you, yes, you can make a difference in the world. And the last thing I want to share with you is this. We don't go to church. We are the church. Amen. We don't go to church. But we are the church. That means humans are the church. We are the body of Christ. And here's something interesting. The church does not exist for us. We exist for the world. I want you to grasp that. That is probably the most important thing I've said today. The church does not exist for us. We exist. The church exists for the world. I thought I'd get a good amen, but I'm going to preach it anyway. The church does not exist for us. We exist for the world. 1 Kings 8. And don't forget the what? Everybody say the foreigner who is not a member of your people Israel, but has come from a far country. In other words, like the prodigal, he was in a far country in his sin. Because of your reputation. People are going to be attracted here by your great reputation. Your wonder working power who come to pray at this temple. So we can never forget about the people who have not yet attended. It's not about us. Well, I don't like that song. Well, I don't like what they did there. It sure... You know, God has a funny idea that church is all about him. Right? We're going to get a song that you like one time. If you don't like the ones today, you'll, next week you'll love the next ones. But I'm here to tell you that we are the body of Christ. I, and I love that this church is so friendly to the guests that arrive. And some of you look for people that you don't know so you can shake their hand And say, welcome to Life Church. I love that about this church. I I compliment you today. You have made such a difference, not only in this community, but in the world. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 27. You are Christ's body. That's who you are. You must never forget this. That's all throughout the Bible, isn't it? Only as you accept your part of that body does your part mean anything. Well, what what are you trying to say? Well, you're you're the body of Christ. And what if you decide, well, I'm just not going to, I'm not going to serve. I'm not going to do anything. Well, that's like taking a thumb off the hand. Now, can, can the hand still function? Yes, you've got four fingers. But it would be much better if the thumb was part of the hand, right? So let me encourage you today. I, I'm not sure what, what you're 
wanting to do. You know, we, we can make it if you don't want to serve. There are plenty of people. But I need you like the 20 that we started with 24 years ago. Because even though you can function, you can function better when the thumb stays a part of the hand. And maybe for some of you need to realize this. We are not spiritual consumers. All right, let me say that again. We are not spiritual consumers. We are spiritual contributors. Well, I'm looking for a church that meets my needs. I get a little bit of that. I understand that. But I think it's real funny that people just have, some, some people have this spiritual consumerism. When God has this idea that church is all about him, and he says, you, you just don't come and sit on a pew. You go out into the mission field of life and you serve. You serve. And I love that life church is that way. Let me show you another scripture. Colossians 1 and 11. As you live this new life, we pray that you will be strengthened from God's boundless resources. Can I get a good amen? God's boundless resources so that you will find yourselves able to pass through any experience and endure it with courage. Here we go again. For we must never forget that he rescued us from the power of darkness and reestablished us in the kingdom of his beloved son, that is, in the kingdom of light. For it is by his son alone And I want to make sure the world hears that that's watching. It is by his son alone. That means not all roads lead to heaven. I want to tell you that in love. But I want to tell you the truth. Not all religions will take you to heaven. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And nobody comes to the Father except by him. That's what the word says. He didn't owe us this, but he gave us salvation, and I'm so thankful. So in return, what should we do? We should give ourselves back. For God so loved the world that he gave. Well, Life Church so loves the world, they give. Amen? How can you be a part of it? Well, in-house people, we need greeters, ushers, There's people learning media right now. They're shadowing people. We need people to help us in children's ministry. And we need people to help us with youth. We we have a few people that are stepping up with that until we can get a youth pastor here. But outside the house, we will continue to to serve. We will continue to do Love the Rock. I don't know how many Love the Rock t-shirts I have. They're in all different colors. They do them in different colors every year. I came across them the other day. You can serve at Agape and help moms trying to save babies. Texas Baptist Children's Home. I'm going there next month, and I'm, I'm speaking to the kids there. You can be a part of their ministry and, and give gifts. We've done that as well. We, we've given tr- truckloads of Christmas gifts to the families there at the Texas Baptist Children's Home. Well, whatever it is that's God calling you to do, be a part of it. And I I close today with this. We had an offering taken when we first started. And there was a little girl. Her name was Lily. And in the offering, she put this, and I have saved it for about 24 years. And her name's on there, Lily. (sighs) And she put 14 pennies inside. And when, when I heard about it, the Lord spoke to me about the widow's might and how she gave more than anybody else. And I thought about over the years, 14, 14, what does the Bible say about the number 14? Well, when you look at it, it's a multiple of seven, right? It's double sevens, double perfection. And she gave a double perfection gift to God. 
And, and God was telling me, if I can use a little girl, eight years old, I can use anybody. And every time the money would get tight over the years, and it, it does at times, it does get tight. COVID, snowmageddon, people couldn't even get out. I'm always reminded that God is going to take care of our needs if he has to use an eight-year-old to do it. And this has kept me going over the years, being encouraged. I thank God for our children who teach us by the mouth of babes, right? And when I need encouragement, I get this out. I don't know what it is in your life, but that is what it is for mine. Lily's offering of 14 cents made a lifetime impact on this pastor. So it's been an amazing 24 years. So let's continue to love God. Let's continue to love people. Let's continue to make a difference in the world over the next 24 years. You say, well, pastor, I don't know if I'm going to be around that long. I don't know if I am either. I don't know what he's got planned for me. But until the day I die, I will love God. I will love people. And I will continue to do my best to make a difference in the world. Do you feel that way? Do you feel that way? Can I get a good amen? Amen. Let's stand today. Those that are watching online and maybe you've never given your life to Christ. Maybe people here in this service today, you've, you've never really given your life to the Lord. You never jumped in 100%. Well, guess what? Today's your day. Today's your day. And you can have an experience with God like you've never had. You can have a relationship. Everybody say a relationship. A relationship with the Almighty. The Almighty. All you have to do is just say, God, I give myself to you. Forgive me of all my sin. Jesus, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. And I turn about face from my sin, and I'm just going to live for you. So I want you to pray that prayer right now. Say, Lord, I'm jumping all in today. I believe in the work of Calvary. I believe in the resurrection. I believe that I can be saved because of my faith that I put in Christ Jesus. And so right here, right now, I confess with my mouth, Jesus Christ is Lord. And I want you to ask him to do something else. I want you to ask him to fill you to overflowing with the breath of God, with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Just ask him right now, say, Lord, I want you to fill me with your Holy Spirit overflowing in a deluge of your presence. Now I want you to lift those hands that he made holy and I want you to worship him right now. And we're going to give him the glory in all things for what he has done. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, we love you. We thank you. We praise you. Thank you for the 24 years. It's been awesome. You have done great things. So we lift our hands in worship today and we bless your name because you are great. You are great. You do miracles so great. This couldn't have happened without you. And so we give you glory today. You saved us. That couldn't have happened without you. We have not been good enough. Never will we be. But I thank you and I praise you today. You're great. There's no one else like you. No one else like you. So we honor you today. Stay in this atmosphere of worship as we continue to sing.